Hi, welcome to another tutorial of annotation series. My name is Jairaj and uh, thanks for joining again. So in this tutorial we will learn auto wire annotations and uh, till now we have seen general purpose annotations and meta annotations provided by Java and uh, we also know that we can create our own custom annotations. So frameworks and library developers also can create custom annotations to extend their functionality in their frameworks and uh, libraries. So this auto wire annotation is not provided by Java. It was introduced in Spring community in uh, Spring version 2.5. So meaning of that is it is a custom annotation and uh, it wasn't created by Java. It was created by Spring. So it is an improved way to do dependency injection and uh, this is the extension of dependency injection functionality of uh, Spring framework. And if you don't know what is dependency injection and bean, please watch my tutorials on fundamentals of Spring Boot and I already put a link into the description. But for now understand one thing that uh, in Spring Framework every time we want to inject a bean of a service or a component or a repository into some instance or some another object at that time we need to do this uh, dependency injection. And before this auto wire annotations developers were using XML files for this purpose such as web.xml and they used to write XML lines something like this. And these XML files are uh, outside of the Java file. So you need to mention class path. You need to mention ID, which is kind of a name of the bean and uh, other important stuff here. And additionally, this is an XML file and we need to write a proper XML. There is uh, no tolerance for error. And uh, additionally, this is an error prone approach. So this new approach of auto wire annotation was introduced and uh, you can do same thing with less effort and less errors. So this is the signature of annotations and spring and as you can see here it has one element required which is a boolean type and this element is for optional dependencies. We will discuss about this required element soon. So moving ahead another thing as I mentioned is all annotations have two basic properties a target and a retention. So for this annotation target is a constructor, method, parameters, field and annotation type. So you can use annotation with this uh, kind of elements and retention policy for this auto wire is runtime. That means this annotation will go till runtime and uh, logically if you see we create these beans and objects on runtime and before this this annotation doesn't make any sense or there is no use of this annotation. So use of this annotation is to inject beans into another beans or objects. Let's understand this by an example. In Spring when we start our application Spring container will uh, start uh, creating necessary objects and uh, sometimes one object needs another object means it is dependent on other object and in that case at runtime spring will create the uh, dependent object and it will inject it. So let's say we have one interface engine and uh, we have implemented class E. So this class E implements engine interface and we have another class called car which needs engine. So this car class have engine inside. So in this case car is dependent on engine and to create car we require engine. But we can create the object of this engine inside a car class with new keywords. But this is not the right approach because it will create a new object every time we use car class and also it will be tightly coupled. So we need to inject this engine bin into car class at runtime. So in old days before annotation when we start our application spring container used to read this XML file and based on the configuration inside this XML file uh, it used to create this uh, objects and used to inject it. But now we can do same thing with this annotation and we just put this annotation on top of any class and you are good. And at the application startup spring container will create bean of engine class and it will inject inside this car class at runtime. And we can apply this auto wire annotation to constructor to method parameter fields and annotation type. So here we have few things to keep in mind. So first thing is auto wiring the constructor. So first of all we have two types of dependency injection a constructor based and a setter based. So meaning every time we create bean or object of any class we have option to use constructor to initiate the class. For example our car class. So we have something like this inside car we have engine and we are using car constructor to initialize this engine. So in this case we are using constructors to initialize the class. And if we want our spring container to inject dependency by constructor we can annotate this constructor. But in the case of constructor we have two things here. So first thing is if we have only one constructor inside the class and in that case it will be used always. We don't need to worry about it. But if we use multiple constructor then how we can tell container that which constructor to use. 
So in this case, we can use this autovira notation with all the constructor. But limitation here is if we have to make a dependency of class mandatory, then we can make only one constructor required. So meaning we need to explicitly put a require equal to false for all constructor except one. So in that case, the constructor with the greatest number of dependencies that can be satisfied by matching beans in Spring Container will be chosen. And if none of the candidates can satisfy this requirement, then primary or default constructor, if present, it will be chosen. If none of the candidates can satisfy this requirement, then primary or default constructor will be used. So for example, take our car class and uh, inside this car, we have these three constructor. We have constructor one with uh, one argument, then we have two argument and we have three arguments. So in this case, Spring will take car with uh, three constructor and it try to inject all three. So if it found all three dependent objects, then it will create car object with this three argument. Otherwise, it will check for two argument constructor and this cycles move ahead. And if none of the constructor satisfy this requirement, then it will create the object using default constructor if it has one. Otherwise, it will throw an error. And another thing is we don't need to make this constructor public. It will work anyways. So moving ahead, we have this uh, auto wiring fields and it will look something like this. And according to Spring documentation, fields are injected right after the construction of bean before any config methods are invoked. So meaning of that is uh, when we create a bean of something, it will run constructor first if it has one. Otherwise, it will directly go for fields. The configuration of fields will happen before invoking any methods inside the class. And additionally, we don't need to make any fields public for auto wiring. It will work without any public modifier. So moving ahead, we have uh, auto wiring the methods. So this approach will look something like this and in this case name of the method doesn't matter. It can have any name as well as any number of argument and uh, this argument will be auto wired with matching bean in the spring container. And again this methods also we don't need to make it public explicitly. And uh, next we have is auto wiring the parameter. So for this kind of auto wiring we can support method or constructor parameter individually. So it will look something like this. But currently only JUnit Jupyter have active support for these features, so we don't need to worry about this. So this was the four different Java elements that we can use annotations on. And one more thing is required element inside this annotation, so which is a boolean type. And the meaning of that is with or without engine, our class will work or it should throw an error. So for example, with require equal to true, at the time of bean creation, container will look uh, all the dependent objects of car and it will look for those classes first and if it will find them all then it will create the class otherwise it will generate an error but if we put require equal to false then it won't generate any error if dependency is available then it will it will inject them otherwise it will create the object anyways and uh, default value of this element is uh, true and uh, moving ahead we have some additional notes something like uh, let's say if we have constructor or method with uh, multiple arguments then we use required and it will be applied to all the arguments that means for example consider this so in this case we have three different argument for this test method and this all three argument is now mandatory because we use required annotation in another thing is in case of array collection or map dependency type the container will auto wire all beans that match the declaration type so to understand this consider below example so we have this uh, list of engines and in this case all engine objects found in spring container will be auto wired here as a list and in case of map a key will be the name of the object and uh, value will be that object that means if we have something like map of a string and engine with auto wire annotation then after dependency injection it will uh, store information something like this and additionally there will be no any order inside this collection or array but if you want to store in particular order you can use at the rate order annotation and additionally we have one more annotation that we can use it with combination of auto wire annotation and that one is a qualifier annotation we will discuss this qualifier annotation in next tutorial and the benefit of uh, auto wire annotation is it can reduce the complexity of writing xml which is time consuming and error prone so this was spring annotation at the rate auto wire and uh, in next tutorial we will discuss at the rate qualifier so that's all for now in this tutorial and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you very much